Hello, dear students. Welcome to the Quantum Guru. I am going to discuss question number one point sixty five of Erado. It's question of two block problem from fraction. So the question states: a plank of mass m one with a bar of mass m two placed on it lies on a smooth horizontal plane. A uh, horizontal force growing with time t as f is equal to a t is a constant is applied to the bar. Find how the accelerations of the plank w one and of the bar w two depend on t. If the coefficient of friction between the plank and the bar is equal to k, draw the approximate plots of these dependences. So whatever is given the question, let me convert that into a diagram. So diagram will look like this. This is a smooth surface over which a plank of mass m1 is placed, and over it a bar of mass m2 is there, and the friction coefficient between m1 and m2 is uh, k, and uh, time varying force f is equal to a t is applied on the plank. So we want to discuss the overall motion of this whole thing. So first of all, before we go ahead, we should uh, calculate. The friction acting between m1 and m2. So between m1 and m2, the normal reaction between m1 and m2 is m2g. So uh, static friction maximum value and uh, kinetic friction value would be the same because we are given only one coefficient, and uh, so that will become to be k times of m2g. And there is a no. Suppose this is a ground, and there is a no friction between ground and M1. So between M1 and ground, uh, the friction is zero. So how the motion will take place? So like this. Suppose this is my uh, cell phone, and uh, the block is placed, and if I pull it, so they are moving together. And if I apply sufficiently large force, then they will separate. So there will be two stages of motion. The first is uh, M1 and M2 will move together, and then they will move separately. So study the phase one when they move together. So as F is growing, so there will be more and more requirement of the friction between M1 and M2, but the friction is limited. So there will be a upper limit of the maximum common acceleration. So we would like to find the that first. What is the maximum common acceleration between M1 and M2? And for uh, maximum common acceleration calculation, I will draw. F B D of M two because that would be easy to calculate because on M two there is only one force acting, and that force is the uh, friction uh, between M one and M two, and that friction is uh, pulling M two in the direction of M one. So uh, when they are about to slip, the friction force would uh, reach to its limiting value that is a K M two G, and this is the maximum maximum force that can act. On M two, so the maximum force, the maximum friction force is K M two G. So accordingly, the maximum common acceleration W max would be the net force divided by mass. So K M two G divided by its mass M two is equal to uh, K N two G. And uh, uh, that was the acceleration of the M one so far. So because M one and M two were moving together, so what is the maximum force? Up to by up to which M one and M two can move together, so that we want to calculate the maximum value of F for which M one and M two are moving together. And for this calculation, uh, we will take the combined F B D of M two and M one. This is M two and this is M one. So I am drawing the combined F B D of M one and M two. So the friction will become internal, and the force uh, it is being pulled by a force F. And because now the acceleration has become maximum uh, W max, so this F would be maximum for keeping them together. And applying the Newton's second law, F max, that is the only force, and uh, that will become total mass m1 plus m2 into uh, W max. W max we just calculated above kg. 
so uh, till what time they will move together because this f is uh, 80 so suppose that time moment is t naught so i can write it uh, f max is equal to a t naught so t naught value will come out to be m1 plus m2 n2 kg divided by a so what is the conclusion conclusion is that for t less than equal to t naught they move together and for t greater than equal to t naught they move separately and now for a general moment of time we have to find the acceleration of uh, m1 and m2 so uh, we have divided the into two phases phase one was a phase of uh, together motion and now i can write for t less than equal to t naught the combined fbd of m1 and m2 i'm drawing here like this and uh, the force at a general time f is equal to 80 so the combined acceleration w and because they have both same acceleration so i can write w1 is equal to w2 is equal to net force divided by total mass and net force is 80 and total mass is m1 plus m2 for t greater than equal to t naught they move separately so we will have to draw the separate fbds so if i draw the fbd of the upper block that is the upper block was m2 and after time t is equal to t naught the slipping has started so the friction will become kinetic and the value of kinetic friction is uh, km2g and so its acceleration w2 will be a uh, net force divided by mass so that is a km2g by m2 so i can simply write it k into g and for uh, m1 i uh, will have to draw the fvd of m1 the plank here that time varying force f is equal to 80 is acting and the reaction of the kinetic friction here that will act k m2 g and suppose its acceleration is w1 so if i apply uh, newton's second law here so what we will get we will get uh, 8 sorry uh, m1 into w1 is equal to 80 minus k m2 g so w1 value will become a upon uh, m1 into t minus k m2 g by m1 and we can summarize all the results that we've got so if i summarize i can write uh, w1 is equal to when they were moved together so was 80 upon m1 plus m2 for time t less than equal to t naught t naught we have defined before and uh, for t greater than equal to t naught the acceleration was only k into g and actually this was for the upper block that is a uh, w2 and for the lower block that is the plank w1 and same for it before they uh, start slipping that was 80 divided by m1 plus m2 for t less than equal to t naught and for t greater than equal to t naught the slipping occurs and we have just written here and that is a a1 by m1 t minus minus k m2 g by m1 for t greater than equal to t naught and now uh, let me uh, just show all these information into very good graph and that was we have to do also that was we have to do also so uh, here is the already drawn the framework of the graph and the same graph will show the acceleration of uh, the two blocks w1 and w2 with time so the graph will have two phases uh, the phase one will be when they move together and that will 
P from beginning till time T naught, and after that they will move separately. So as you can see here, uh, for T less than equal to T naught for the both block, the acceleration is varying linearly with time, and the, the that acceleration is same for both at a moment. So for the two blocks, it will vary linearly like this. This is for W two. And this is for W1, they are moving separately and they will together reach to a maximum common acceleration. And that maximum common acceleration is K into G. And after that, the acceleration of the upper block will remain the same that we it uh, equal to the maximum common acceleration like this. So this is the graph for the acceleration of W2 in the graph acceleration of the upper block. And after that, uh, the acceleration of the lower block. See, for t greater than t naught, this is a still a linear graph because it is varying linearly with time. So it will still be a straight line. But you see that uh, this slope and this slope. Here, numerator, the slope is a upon m1 plus m2 for t less than or equal to t naught. And for greater than t naught, that is a a1 by m1. So denominator has become less. It means the slope will become more. So now it will uh, move with a greater slope. So the graph of the acceleration of the lower block would be something like this. And this is the acceleration W1. And this, that is how the variation of the acceleration look like with respect to time. Thank you.